This week's Parsha is called Mishpatim, which is statutes, judgments, basically laws. And um, this Parsha, we get a huge number of commandments, laws, that are thrown at us. The first three quarters of the Parsha is entirely laws. It contains just a huge list of what could appear as random laws, okay? The first five aliyahs or, you know, um, readings from the Parsha are entirely about man's relationship with man and the rest of creation. All of the laws that we see in the beginning of Mishpatim have something to do with the way that we interact with others and the world around us. All right, they are not about our relationship with God. I mean, they are ultimately about our relationship with God because everything that we do is about our relationship with God. But these are specifically laws that relate, most of them anyway, that relate to our relationship with other people. Okay, so we just came out of Egypt. We've been slaves for hundreds of years and now we're free. But God tells us, Freedom does not mean that we can just do whatever we want without restriction. In fact, freedom requires from us much more responsibility. As slaves, we were being told what to do, and we had very little room, time, or energy to think for ourselves. A slave doesn't have time to think. A slave just has to do what he's told to do, and the goal of a slave is to do absolutely the least amount that they can get away with doing without getting themselves killed or severely beaten. But to be a holy nation requires much more than that. It requires that we get out of the slave mentality, that we turn on our brains and that we learn to be mindful. It requires that we function not as automatons, but as the freedom-endowed, powerful beings made in the image of God that we are. In fact, the thing that slavery does best is that it forces us to forget who we really are. When we are slaves, we don't have time to think. We just do, and we forget who we really are. Now, in order to do that, in order to be the, the freedom-endowed, powerful beings made in the image of God that we are, God had to give us laws that would outline our responsibilities as free people created in the image of God. The Parsha includes, for example, the commandment not to gossip or to speak negative speech about someone as well as to have mercy on a beast of burden that belongs to someone you hate. Wow, God really understands human nature. He says, look, you need to treat your fellow man a certain way, and this is how you need to treat him. But sometimes there are going to be people you just don't like. Maybe you even hate them, but that is no excuse to be cruel. If you see, for example, that your enemy's donkey is buckling under a heavy burden or wandering off, you should help him, the donkey. Not because of your enemy's sake, but for the donkey's sake, for your sake. Because being cruel to an animal affects you at a very core level. Okay? So at first glance, most of the laws that are contained in this Parsha. Um, pertaining to man's interaction with man and nature may seem like they're simply about the others that we come in contact with, when in reality it's the opposite. How we interact with our world and with other people, the creatures and, and others around us, directly affects who we are at our core being, okay? How we interact with them is a reflection and affects who we are deep down inside. If we ignore the plight of others, we become hard on the inside and we can't be sensitive to the leading of our soul. 
our soul becomes covered. It becomes hidden and can't penetrate that covering. Like an orange, we develop a rind that obscures the beautiful, juicy fruit of who we really are. That, that juicy fruit, that bit is our godly soul. And when we become hard, we lose our ability to get to that juicy part. And we lose our ability to fulfill our purpose for having been created and put in this world. And that's one reason that we're given relationships. Our interaction with other people helps us to grow and to develop. They, the other people, help us peel back the rind, which is concealing that beautiful juicy fruit that resides within us, exposing the godly spark at the core of who we are. Now, we've all heard the metaphor about rocks in a tumbling machine, right? How do you polish a bunch of ugly old rocks into beautiful decorative stones? You put them all together in a container and tumble them together. The roughness of each stone polishes the roughness off the next stone, and together they all become polished and beautiful. That's one of the reasons that we were designed to need other people. That's why we were given the concept of family and society. It's what helps develop us into beautifully polished stones of value. Now, as slaves, we didn't have the energy or the emotional space to think about others. All we could think about was surviving, surviving from one moment to the next. Each man had to concentrate on himself, getting through the day. There was no room to think about others. There was no room for compassion. And here, the first major set of laws that we receive are all about that overarching theme of compassion. And that is actually the hallmark of what it means to be a Jew, that he acts with compassion. So here in this week's Parsha, we're told, for example, that even slaves are not slaves forever. There's supposed to be a limit to their indenture. That if a person causes injury or damage to another, he's to compensate him for it. That if a man is asked to watch over something for his neighbor, he has a responsibility to keep it safe. That a man's not allowed to have his way with a young woman and then leave her. He has to take responsibility for his actions. We're told explicitly that we are not to mistreat a stranger or to oppress a widow or an orphan. We are to lend to the poor without charging interest. And if the only thing he has to give us uh, for collateral is his cloak, his clothing, then it's supposed to be returned to him before nighttime when it turns cold. We're told not to listen to a false report or take or partake in being a false witness or to pervert justice in any way. We're told not to accept a bribe. We're told not to cook a kid in its mother's milk. Wait, wait, what? <laughs> yeah, that last one, that almost doesn't seem to follow, right? Totally different than all of those other laws, and I didn't quote all of them, but I just gave you kind of an overview. The milk, not cooking a kid in its mother's milk, is about compassion. The milk gave sustenance to that animal. It's not to be used in preparation of its, it, after it dies, uh, as a way to satisfy our um, animal instincts to eat, you know, because it's count, as counterintuitive as it may sound, the spiritual condition of that with which we nourish our physical bodies affects our spiritual selves. And so we are to be careful about what we take in through every opening of our being, okay? We have to be careful about what we see, about what we hear, what we think about, what we eat. Everything that we take inside our body, we have to be careful about. So then the sixth aliyah, the sixth reading of the Torah portion for this week, contains the promise that Hashem is going to guard us and bring us into the place that he has prepared for us. And that if we obey the laws that he set out for us, it says in Shemot, Exodus 23, verse 25, and you shall worship the Lord your God 
and he will bless your food and your drink, and I will remove the illness from your midst.